Um, shortly after I moved to the United States, I observed how health disparities and social determinants of health um, really affected the minority communities. Um, I, I started working as a prevention specialist at a school district, actually two, two different school districts in different parts of town. And I observed how um, really a zip code can define the quality of life that the people um, experience. So I noticed how in the low income um, school district, <clears throat> the health disparities and social disparities were greater. Um, parents were struggling to um, help their kids because of lack of education. Um, they didn't know how to access resources. They didn't know how to, they didn't even know that they, they had resources available in their community. Um, the kids were not able to be helped by their parents uh, to do homework, for example. So they would get behind uh, because the parents lack of language, for example, um, and education. How the uh, patterns of poverty and uh, generational trauma affected uh, the communities, right? So I knew that it was a big problem and I wanted to be part of the solution. So I continued to work um, with community health workers. Um, I saw how stigma um, and uh, the fear of accessing health resources uh, prevented them to getting the the uh, the help that they needed, especially in mental health, um, and some and sometimes uh, just preventive healthcare. Right. So when I had the opportunity to join Equality Health as a leader of the community health worker team. Um, I was excited to be able to continue to help the communities access those resources, right? As community health workers, what we do is we connect the people with the resources available in their communities. Um, we understand not only the challenges that the communities have, but we understand also the strengths that those communities have. So we are able to connect them, to educate them on how to access them and to help them overcome the barriers that they are facing um, to when accessing these resources, right? So um, with that, we are able to combat those disparities, um, addressing the social determinants of health needs that they have, the insecurities that, the, the social insecurities that they are facing. It's the body keeps a score uh, by Dr. Van der Kolk. So uh, The Body Keeps a Score, it's a great book um, that talks about trauma and how we, um, everybody experiences trauma, right? From little T to big T's, um, we all experience trauma and our bodies capture that trauma in different ways. So um, trauma affects the brain and how the brain is wired. So um, this book talks about how uh, sometimes, you know, with uh, talk therapy, you are able to process your thoughts and your feelings in and how your thoughts affect the feelings. But really, um, we're leaving the body behind and the effect that uh, it, it does in physically in the body the somatic symptoms so um the the book talks about how different uh, somatic therapy approaches can um benefit like yoga meditation um and how we can recognize those somatic symptoms and then uh be able to to heal from the body not only the mind so I think it's great for everybody to 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 learn to understand our own bodies and our own um, uh, ways of healing. So having breakfast for dinner is one of my guilty pleasures. Um, our family loves uh, to spend that uh, feeling of a Saturday or Sunday uh, relaxed uh, 
breakfast together. Uh, but we make some time during the week to enjoy that, um, you know, that calorie overload, <laughs> if you will, but with the feeling of um, enjoying ourselves, sharing uh, a meal and uh, feeling like we are relaxing in the weekend, but it's really a Wednesday. 